Hey, martial arts addicts all over the world. I hope you're all good. I hope you've been enjoying the videos and discussions that I've been posting. Please continue to hit the like button, make comments, and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Today, I wanted to give you something a bit more lighthearted, but still in line with martial arts and martial arts history. Now, the black community in America have had a long association with the martial arts movies, and this has made its way into music, especially hip hop culture. Now, I said the first rap group to do this was the Fushnikins, who made tracks such as Who Stole the Pebble Out the Master's Hand and Some Dumb Monkey. And they used uh, lyrics like, I used the tiger, the snake, and the big daddy crane, all in homage to Chinese martial arts and movies. However, the most iconic group to do this, without a shadow of doubt, is none other than the Wu-Tang Clan. So today, I'm gonna to talk about some of the movies and characters that influenced them in their music. But not only that, I'm gonna look into the reality of what's portrayed in these movies. So please check it out and I hope you enjoy. So, to begin with, I'm gonna talk about RZA and the lyrics that he uses in the track, Wu-Tang Clan ain't not enough with. Tell him what you say, RZA. And the survey said you're dead. The fatal flying guillotine chops off your fucking head. RZA chose the fatal flying guillotine to represent his lyrical style. He was referring to the movie Master of the Flying Guillotine, sometimes known as the One-Armed Boxer 2, in which an evil assassin wants to avenge the death of his students who were killed by the One-Armed Boxer from the previous movie. Now, the master assassin is blind and doesn't know what the One-Armed Boxer looks like. So he decides to kill anyone that he hears has one arm. This assassin has a mysterious weapon that basically consists of a hat or a basket that he uses to throw onto his victim's head. He then pulls a chain or a cord and a set of blades to decapitate the victim. Hence the lyrics, fatal flying guillotine chops off your thing head. But is there any truth to this weapon actually existing? Well, the idea of this weapon is connected to the Emperor Yong Zheng, who was known to be a ruthless man who some believed killed members of his own family in order to rise and maintain his power. This included the assassination of his brother, who when found, his head was nowhere to be seen. And this gave rise to the legend of the flying guillotine. Now, the National Geographic did a documentary that included this weapon, and they looked at whether it was possible for such a weapon to exist. In order for it to work though, the assassin would have to actually put the basket on the person's head as throwing it wouldn't guarantee it landing on the opponent correctly. But their conclusion was that it could work. In my opinion, I think there are two other weapons that probably helped bring about the question of whether such a weapon existed. The Chinese rope dart and the meteor hammer. The rope dart or Shang Biao consists of a metal dart attached to a length of rope. The dart can be thrust at an opponent and then pulled back using the rope. The user of the weapon can be seen twirling the dart around themselves, even twining the rope around their body before shooting it out in various directions. The meteor hammer is very similar, but instead has a very heavy iron ball attached to the end of the rope. I doubt that either of these weapons could decapitate an opponent. However, as you can see from this demonstration of the meteor hammer, they could potentially cause serious injury, if not death. And that's why I think it's more likely that the flying guillotine was probably brought about by exaggerating the effectiveness of these two weapons. In the same song, the Wu-Tang begin the track with the words Tiger Style. Tiger Style, they keep repeating that. And they're referring to the movie Executioners of Shaolin. Now in the movie, a character called Pai Mei or Bak Mei, the, the white eyebrow, shows his mastery of an internal system of Kung Fu that enables him to protect the vulnerable parts of his body, including making his testicles disappear. Is there any truth at all to such a technique existing? Well, in the southern Chinese praying mantis system called Chao Ga, some practitioners have mastered the technique of sucking or drawing their testicles into their bodies. So if you try to kick or grab them between their legs, it'll have little effect. In BBC Free's Body, Mind and Kick-Ass Moves, David Yip offered Chris Credelli to have a feel after he tried kicking him in the nuts. 
Chris looked like he was happy to just take his word for it, but obliged and tried to grab David's testicles. According to Chris, there was nothing there. The last thing that I'm going to look at in today's video is from the track, The Mystery of Chess Boxing. In the intro, we hear the following statement. This actually is from the film The Five Deadly Venoms when a master is telling the student about five pupils that he once had. One of them was taught the toad style which has made the pupil's body resilient to harm. Now there's a Wing Chun master called Austin Go, who back in the 80s was so well known for performing similar feats like the student in the Five Deadly Venoms movie that he was known as the Iron Man of Wing Chun. In 1980 Austin appeared on the television show Just Amazing, where he demonstrated his ability to perform some pretty impressive feats, like bending iron bars against his throat, having chopsticks broken against his stomach and throat, having concrete blocks broken on his stomach, and having them smashed with a sledgehammer on his head. Now, according to Austin, he was able to direct his internal energy, or chi, into various parts of his body, which would then render that part resilient to injury. My view on this, well, breathing is an important part of life. So breathing exercises are valuable, uh, especially in, in exercises like martial arts and other physical forms of activity. However, I do think that Austin's ability has more to do with conditioning of his body through very harsh training in order to increase the strength of the various parts of his body. It's still very impressive and it just goes to show what can be achieved when you dedicate your time and effort to your training. There are loads more references to different Kung Fu movies with connections to actual martial arts from the Wu-Tang Clan. Way too many for me to do it any justice on one video. But I hope that this has given you some inspiration to go and listen to their tracks, especially from their first album. Plus, I hope that it's made you want to watch the Kung Fu movies that inspired them. Martial arts addicts all over the world, I hope you enjoyed my video. Thank you very much for watching. Keep liking, keep commenting, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Until next time, peace and love to all of you.